The term Pithecanthropus erectus, which was later changed to Homo erectus and literally means upright ape man, was coined in 1893. So the idea that some scientists believed that Neanderthals who lived only 50,000 years ago did not walk fully upright is a strange idea. In the heart of central Java, beneath fertile rice paddies and layers of volcanic ash, a prehistoric secret waited for discovery. It was 1969 when Indonesian paleoanthropologist Sastro Hamijojo and his team unearthed a skull that would become the most complete Homo erectus cranium ever found in Southeast Asia. Catalogued as Sangjiran 17, this fossil was hailed as a near-perfect example of the so-called Java Man lineage, an archaic human who roamed the tropics over half a million years ago. But as the decades passed and new technologies emerged, that tidy classification began to blur. Recent discoveries from the Tibetan Plateau and the seafloor off Taiwan, specifically the Xiahe and Penghu mandibles, have raised a haunting question. Was Sangiran 17 truly Homo erectus, or was he something more mysterious? Could this ancient Indonesian hominin have been an ancestor to the elusive Denisovans? To understand this bold hypothesis, we must first step back into Sangiran's world, a lush, dangerous, ever-changing tropical frontier that bore witness to one of the longest human occupations anywhere on Earth. Sangiran 17 lived approximately 1 million to 1.3 million years ago, in what is now the Sangiran Dome region of central Java. This area, one of the richest paleoanthropological sites in the world, has yielded more than 80 hominin fossils, most of them classified as Homo erectus. But during Sangiran 17's lifetime, Java was far from the idyllic agricultural paradise it is today. It was a volatile land of erupting volcanoes, shifting sea levels, and seasonal flooding. Java, in the middle Pleistocene, was part of the Greater Sunda Shelf, a massive landmass that linked mainland Southeast Asia with the Indonesian islands and Borneo during periods of low sea level. The region's ecology alternated between dense monsoon forests, grassy savannas, and mangrove wetlands. It teemed with megafauna. Giant crocodiles, elephants like Stegodon, ancient bovids, and flightless birds. The predator list was equally daunting. Tigers, hyenas, and even saber-toothed cats may have prowled the margins of the swamps and rivers where Sangiran 17 hunted and scavenged. Sangiran 17's kind likely used simple stone tools to butcher meat, crack bones, and perhaps shape wooden spears. Fossilized bones of prey animals bear cut marks suggesting systematic hunting or scavenging. But more than anything, Survival in Java demanded adaptability. The landscape was repeatedly transformed by volcanic activity, and occasional tsunamis or rising seas would have reshaped the shoreline, isolating and reuniting populations over thousands of years. In this crucible of change, Sangaran 17 emerged, a robust, thick-browed, thick-skulled hominin whose face, for all its primitive traits, suggests something more complex than we once believed. When Sangaran 17 was first studied, he was heralded as a textbook Homo erectus specimen. The cranium was long and low, with pronounced brow ridges, a sharply angled occipital bone at the back of the skull, and a cranial capacity of about 1,040 cubic centimetres, larger than earlier erectus finds from Africa and China. The skull's robusticity was stunning. The bones were thick and heavy, more than twice as dense as those of modern humans. But beneath the surface, questions lingered. Compared to African Homo erectus, sometimes labelled Homo ergaster, Sangjiran 17 had a flatter face, an extremely thick mandible, though not preserved in this case, and a unique cranial architecture, traits that didn't align neatly with other erectus fossils. In time, some researchers began to refer to Southeast Asian Homo erectus as a subspecies. Homo erectus soloensis or Homo erectus javanicus, acknowledging their distinctiveness. Then, in the 21st century, the world met the Denisovans. In 2010, scientists analysing a finger bone from Denisova Cave in Siberia made a startling announcement. The fossil, though indistinct to the naked eye, yielded DNA that didn't match either Neanderthals or modern humans. It represented a previously unknown hominin group, one that had split from the Neanderthals over 400,000 years ago and interbred with ancestors of modern humans in Asia and Oceania. 
named Denis Sovens after the cave where they were discovered, this ghost lineage would soon upend everything we thought we knew about human dispersals. But the Denisovans were an enigma. While genetic data suggested they ranged widely, from Siberia to the Philippines, New Guinea, and possibly even Australia, fossil evidence remained scarce. Only a few fragments were known. A finger, a few teeth, and later two mandibles, one from Xiahe in Tibet, and another dredged up off the coast of Taiwan, dubbed the Penghu mandible. These two jaws would become critical in re-evaluating Sangiran 17. The Xiahe mandible, discovered in a high-altitude cave in Tibet and dated to 160,000 years ago, was an unexpected match to Denisovan DNA via preserved collagen proteins. The jaw was massive, with enormous molars and a robust build unlike that of Neanderthals or Homo sapiens. The Penghu mandible, although lacking DNA, was almost identical in shape and tooth size, yet it had been found in a completely different environment, underwater near Taiwan, and was likely much older. What shocked researchers was the striking similarity between these jaws and the massive mandibles found throughout Southeast Asia, including those from the Sanjiran Dome. In particular, some Sanjiran mandibles, although not directly associated with Sanjiran 17, shared the Penghu jaw's thickness, tooth proportions, and angular design. Could it be that the so-called Java man specimens were not Homo erectus at all, but part of the Denisovan population? This theory, though still controversial, has gained traction. While Denisovans are genetically distinct from Neanderthals and modern humans, their physical appearance remains murky. Most fossils assigned to them are incomplete. But if they were characterized by ultra-robust jaws, massive teeth and strong cranial features, then the Southeast Asian fossil record suddenly appears full of potential Denisovans hiding in plain sight. Though the skull of Sangiran 17 lacks the lower jaw needed for a direct comparison with Xiahe or Penghu, his cranium fits the same profile. Thick cranial walls, large brain size for his era, around 1,000 cubic centimeters, robust brow ridges, and a general shape that defies neat categorization within Homo erectus. If we entertain the idea that Denisovans were not just a Siberian population, but a widespread and morphologically variable branch of archaic humans, then Sangiran 17 becomes a prime candidate for reclassification. This reinterpretation would have enormous implications. First, it would confirm that Denisovans were not merely a cold climate people confined to caves in the north. They were tropical, adaptive, and perhaps even dominant across Southeast Asia. Second, it would mean that the interbreeding with modern humans that Denisovan DNA reveals in Melanesians and Aboriginal Australians likely took place not in Siberia, but much further south, perhaps even in the forests of Sunda near where Sangiran 17 once walked. Sangiran 17 shares surprising parallels with 600,000-year-old Peking man from China, broad zygomatics, a thick supraorbital torus, and a sloping forehead. Paleoanthropologists point out that Peking Man and Sangiran 17 exhibit striking similarities. This isn't a random coincidence. It suggests an evolutionary thread linking Java and East Asia, with populations evolving in tandem and, more intriguingly, exchanging genes. Sangiran 17 exhibits robust cranial features similar to those seen in Bodo. The thick brow ridges, elongated skull shape, and prominent occipital region align closely with African specimens. While Sangiran 17 is dated to approximately 1.3 million years ago, the persistence of these features across different time periods suggests long-term evolutionary continuity rather than isolated evolution. If Sangiran 17 represents an ancestral population that contributed to African hominins, then the similarities become even more significant. This would indicate that populations moving between Africa and Asia were not merely migrating, but were also interbreeding, allowing genetic traits to persist across regions separated by vast distances. What's more, many researchers have noted similarities between ancient Aboriginal skulls and Java man. The similarities between Peking man and Sangiran 17 suggest that human evolution was not confined to isolated regions, but involved significant interaction between distant populations. The persistence of robust features in later humans, along with the continuity between Peking Man and Sangjiren 17, points to a long-standing genetic exchange.
The Moyokerto child, discovered in 1936 in East Java, Indonesia, is a fossilized skull cap of a juvenile Homo erectus. This specimen holds immense significance as one of the oldest Homo erectus fossils in Asia. Initially, its precise age was the subject of much debate due to uncertainties about its stratigraphic context and the lack of reliable dating techniques at the time of its discovery. The Mojokerto child could be as old as 1.8 million years and would represent the earliest fossil evidence of hominid dispersal outside of Africa. The Mojokerto child has been the most controversial of the early human fossils that have been found in Indonesia. Its date and even the exact site of its discovery have been widely disputed. Geochronologists and paleontologists use the argon-argon dating method to propose a date 1.8 million years ago, with a margin of error of plus or minus 40,000 years. The authors of the paper argued that this date had wide implications for our understanding of the first human migrations out of Africa. The Mojokerto child's age provides compelling evidence for the early migration of Homo erectus from Africa to Asia. This discovery supports the theory that Homo erectus was the first hominin species to leave Africa, showcasing remarkable adaptability to diverse environments. Its presence in Java highlights the extensive geographic range of this species, which spanned Africa, Asia, and Europe. Finally, it would suggest that the current taxonomy of Homo erectus in Southeast Asia may be too simplistic. Rather than a single hominin species evolving in isolation, we may be looking at a mosaic of overlapping populations, some Erectus, some Denisovan, and some hybrids of the two. Despite the growing similarities between Sangiran fossils and known Denisovan traits, many scholars remain cautious. The fossil record in Southeast Asia is fragmentary, often poorly dated, and lacks DNA preservation due to the hot, humid conditions. No definitive Denisovan DNA has yet been recovered from Java or Sumatra. As a result, the classification of Sanguran 17 as Homo erectus still stands. But paradigms in paleoanthropology have shifted before, just as the out-of-Africa theory once dismissed Neanderthal interbreeding, only to be overturned by genetics. The strict classification of Sanguran fossils may yield to new technologies. Protein sequencing, isotopic analysis, and future fossil finds may one day confirm that Denisovans, not Homo erectus, were the true rulers of ancient Java. Until then, Sanguran 17 remains a haunting figure, a relic of a time when human evolution was far messier than we imagined. He was tall, strong, and intelligent. His people survived for hundreds of thousands of years on a volatile island, crafting tools, navigating rivers, and possibly meeting the first waves of Homo sapiens to arrive in Sunderland. Did they fight? Did they share stories? Did they whisper sweet nothings? We may never know. But the bones of Sanguran 17 offer a tantalizing clue that the Denisovans were never a fringe group in the shadows of Siberia. They may have been the giants of the jungle, the architects of a forgotten chapter of human evolution, and Sanguran 17, their unwitting ambassador. Who knows? Maybe the ape man of Java is the real missing link after all. Thank you for watching, and please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for updates.